No more information leaks, no more low resolution images, no more second guessing ourselves because the all new 2020 Land Rover Defender is officially here. It makes its debut at the 2019 Frankfurt Motor Show and in this video I'm going to show you all the features and discuss styling, technology, availability and also pricing. There's just one thing we don't know yet about the upcoming Land Rover Defender in the United States and that is fuel economy. But you got to check this out because well we're getting two models the 90 stands for a two-door short wheelbase and Defender 110 or 110 it's the four-door version long wheelbase so you have options you could bring up to six people in a two-door which is a little bit mind-boggling because you would think alright it's a pretty small vehicle but it's actually wide enough and Land Rover is doing a three abreast seating in the front with a jump seat because their dash design is such with a transmission shifter on the dash that there is room in the front row for three up to three passengers and there is also room up to three passengers in the rear and that's the two-door Defender 90. For the Defender 110 you have a lot more options obviously you have four full doors so it's basically a big SUV and then you have options to sit five people so two in the front, three in the second row, or uh, six people. Uh, you can do that with three in the front, three in the back, or also five plus two. So basically two in the front, three in the middle, and up to two seats additionally um, in the back area. So a lot of different options as far as seating and body styles are concerned. What about power though? Well, it's really interesting because we had a leak information from South Africa but this is the information for United States. There are going to be two gasoline engines. Both are branded Ingenium in Land Rover speak. And the top of the line engine is a three liter turbocharged i6. And it's also a mild hybrid. So total power is 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. This is a lot of power for any SUV, especially an off-road biased SUV like this and it's going to be available on Defender 90 and 110 so two-door and four-door versions in these trims there's going to be SC, HSC, X, Defender X and of course first edition is kind of a launch edition with um, some visual cues to let you know that this is the first Defender and we've been waiting for a Defender in the United States for ages it was available back in the 90s and it was a true off-road truck but now it has brand new styling of course brand new technology and it's basically coming across the world in many countries but we're really happy it's actually coming to the United States. The second engine is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder and uh, this engine is also available in some other Land Rover and Jaguar vehicles. Um, 296 horsepower in this case, 295 pound feet of torque. So once again a very torquey engine, very powerful engine indeed um, and it's a base engine for the Defender 110. Uh, base and S trims will have this engine as well. Both engines are paired to a ZF 8-speed automatic transmission. The transmission is slightly different for the two engines because it has to handle a lot more power in this case and also a mild hybrid capability, so electrified capability. But once again, this is not a full electric Defender. You know, you won't be able to have big range on electric power. It just gets you going just before the actual gas engine comes on and gets you moving down the road. Next up, let's talk about affordability, capability and specs because there is a lot to discuss here. So first of all, we have an all independent suspension, air suspension for the Defender 90 and 110. Maximum ground clearance is 11.5 inches, which is really competitive in this segment of mid-size off-road worthy SUVs. Um, and but the standard ride height is actually around 8.5 to 8.6 inches which is also pretty respectable so you have about three inches of uh, range between kind of the standard height and the maximum off-road height and in that maximum off-road height you do have very very competitive approach departure and breakover angles 38.1 approach 40 departure this is really really good and also what's really good is a breakover because people talk about long wheelbase vehicles have poor 
breakover angles, but not really in this case because the long wheelbase 110 has a 28 degree breakover and a short wheelbase 90 has 31 degree breakover. So, uh, and of course, wading depth or water crossing uh, fording depth is about three feet, so 35.4 inches. And before we get to some of the towing and weights, it's important to note that this is a full-time four-wheel drive system. But, and I'll, I'll get to the terrain management system in a, in a little while, but it has a center differential um, and also an uh, optional active rear locker. Uh, well, let's talk about some other important items like towing and payload, because if you are using it as an overland rig, if you are going long distance, you probably need to bring some stuff with you. So, maximum payload is 1,780 pounds for the US spec defenders. Um, curb weight is actually fairly hefty with all the stuff it has on board at 4,800 pounds approximately, but still very usable to bring several people and a lot of stuff. And you can tow up to 8,200 pounds or 8,201 pounds in this case, and this is the same towing capacity as the Land Rover Discovery, the current one. So that's a really sizable trailer you can bring with you. Um, and that kind of what differentiates the Defender from several other um, SUVs in this space because the towing capability is there. So if you want to bring an off-road trailer, boom, you have an option to do that. And then a couple of more interesting parts, the rear axle ratios are a little different depending on your configuration. You can get a 355, uh, which is pretty good already for the three liter, really torquey, of course, the uh, straight six, or a 410 with a two liter engine. So, so you have the gearing to do some crawling. And of course you have a two speed transfer case with low range. So that's also available to you. Um, and of course it had to be there in my opinion, in order for it to be really off-road worthy. Finally, you've been looking at this for a while in this video. What do you guys think about the styling? Does it kind of continue the heritage of the previous Defender? Um, let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, but it's, it's, it's really different. I mean, it, there's some cues from the previous Defenders. It is a boxy vehicle, uh, but it has a modern take on it. And what I like the most is actually some of the accessories that Land Rover is gonna offer. And they're offering many different accessories like roof racks, side cargo boxes, um, air intakes, like little air snorkels on the side, a ladder to get to your uh, cargo box on top. Uh, I think all those are good things, especially different wheel options. One of the tire packages is going to be a Goodyear Wrangler tire, and it's going to be 32. Of course, a lot of you will probably modify this Defender eventually, uh, of course, when you get to it. Um, here's some other data. I'm not going to go over all of it because well, there's just a lot of numbers and you can also see all this on tflcar.com, our website, with all the other information, of course. But here you can see just the difference in the wheelbase, which is pretty dramatic. Almost about 17 inches longer is the four-door version. And you can see it visually very clearly when you look at this, at them side by side in a profile. Width, actually a fairly wide vehicle. I believe this width is with the uh, side mirrors. If you think it's gonna be really narrow and really nimble, uh, well, that still, I think, uh, will allow it to go on most trails, but you may have to be kind of precise. So let's get to some of the technology aspects of the new Defender. So we went over some of these already. So permanent four-wheel drive is available. It is a unibody vehicle, not a body on frame. And Land Rover says it actually adds a lot more stiffness to the whole structure because they're able to use latest technologies to make the body very, very rigid and actually tune the suspension appropriately uh, for the different on-road and off-road conditions as well. Uh, there is driver assistance technologies galore. It has cameras, three-dimensional views. You have an option for a see-through or invisible hood where it actually projects an image of what's in front of the vehicle. You have ultrasonic sensors. You have radar. Of course, you have you know, adaptive cruise control. You have a new 10-inch infotainment system, uh, which is actually the next generation of the system. And it's, of course, available with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that's all neat stuff. And terrain response systems are there in order to help you navigate off-road. Um, of course, this is different settings for like sand, snow, mud, rocks. 
and you've seen this before on some of the other, other Land Rover vehicles. So they're using technology to help you navigate and cross different terrain. There's also a Terrain Response 2 system, which is optional in 110 model, so it's kind of a next generation of this. Of course, we need to test this out and see exactly how it works. So we're looking forward to seeing the defenders here, but also you have an active locking rear diff um, to help you, you know, with traction. And it's gonna be available on the Defender with a three liter and standard on the Defender X. Finally, when is it gonna be available? Um, they say spring 2020. So it, at first we knew it was gonna be in 2020 calendar year. Now Land Rover says spring time. So what, within about six to eight months, but we get to see it first. Then of course we get to test it for the first time and finally it's gonna be available in the spring. Um, pricing. We thought it wasn't available until just a few minutes ago, we got the information. Starting price for the new Land Rover Defender is 49,900 bucks. So just squeaks underneath 50 grand to start. But as soon as you add the bigger, longer wheelbase, the four door, all the options, price goes up to 80,900 bucks. So this is not gonna be a very, very, uh, inexpensive off-roader, but it's in an interesting space as far as competition, and we'll be doing a lot of other videos as far as competition is concerned, because in my opinion, it sits between, somewhere between a fully loaded Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, which is also 55, 56, 57,000 bucks, or maybe on the other side, maybe something like a Toyota Land Cruiser, uh, which is 85 grand, um, of course, that's a bigger vehicle as well. And the size-wise, the Defender's kind of splitting the space on both size, capability, and price. So it's gonna be really interesting to see exactly how it fits and how it does off-road. And go back to tflcar.com for my news views on the real world Land Rover Defender reviews.